Hello, everyone. Welcome to uh, The Alley-Oop by Ontario Basketball. I'm your host tonight, Devin Gray, uh, and I'm joined by the point guard and the three-on-three representative for Team Canada, Alex Superman Johnson. Now, without any further ado, let's bring him in. Hey, how you doing? Alex, good to see you. Uh, good how to you doing? Thanks for having me. Apologies for being late. Yeah, you just zoomed in. Take a deep breath. <laughs> you just got off the highway. Yeah. Uh, uh, my wife is pregnant, so when she calls for something, I was actually on my way home, driving home, and she needed something from the grocery store. So You got to get it for her. Yeah, most definitely. I know but that pre- myself. We, yeah, have a, pre- we have a nine-month-old girl. So. Yeah. Uh, oh, congratulations. <laughs> Went went through that recently ourselves. So yeah, I mean, congratulations to you. I I saw the announcement, and I was telling, I was talking to um Claude, our executive director, Claude Nemhard, this morning about having you on tonight, and oh, he okay. said, "Oh, you know, you know, they're pregnant." I said, "Yeah, everyone knows. This is the first couple of basketball. I'm pretty sure everyone's seen the the famous proposal video, and if they haven't, you know, you just have to look for the um, love and basketball proposal. I was looking; it's got like seven and a half million views, man. Yeah, it's crazy. Definitely a blessing." to be honest. Do you still see that pop up all the time? Uh, most definitely. Like, it's weird. Like, every couple of months, it'll, it'll go viral, like mini viral. It's so weird. But uh, it, Yeah, it just flies I, around I, the internet. Anyone that yeah. hasn't seen it sees it for the first time, maybe. So, yeah, it's pretty cool, though. Um, I'm surprised at how, uh, how long it's been going on, because me and Bree have been almost married for almost five years uh, come in September. It must have been a, a trip to leave her coming out of quarantine and then to travel all the way to Austria to play in three on three. Um, what was that experience like? Uh, it was pretty good. Uh, it was tough leaving uh, Brie uh, just because, uh, you know, you want to be there, you want to be a part of everything. But uh, in, in terms of being able to uh, just be able to train and, you know, get some good competition. It was good. You know, the trip to Austria was, it was a little disappointing because we fell short of our goal, but um, we definitely learned, learned things from failure. So it was a good experience for me. And then, you know, representing Canada, like wearing Canada across your chest, like I'm, was that a first for you? And then how, what was that feeling? Like? Oh, def- it was, it was definitely a first for me. Um, the closest I ever got to the national team was an open tryout um, when Leo was coaching. Uh, made it to you know one of the last cuts, and then I, I didn't make the team. So to be able to uh, have another avenue to represent Canada was definitely an honor, and um, it was definitely a blessing to put on the jersey and be able to represent. Your, your team went two and two. Uh, you filled up the scoring sheet. I saw you were one of the leading scorers a lot of the games, doing damage from the outside, from the perimeter. And three on three, that's a two-point shot. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, How do you feel like your game translated to three on three? Um, well, personally, I've been playing three on three my whole life. Uh, this, new, uh, way, this new FIBA way is uh, I only started a couple years ago, but when I was growing up, we used to just play three on three like, um, at the Lawrence Heights Community Center. Like when there wasn't enough for five on five, we were playing three on three. So it's it's definitely um, one of the uh, toughest and easy games to play. And you know, being able to be in that atmosphere, you kind of it kind of reminds me of being a kid again. Yeah, man. You say it's easy and tough. What part of it is easy and what part of it is tough? Um, well, to be honest, the, the transition I, I felt was a, a little bit easy. It's a, it's a lot easier than the regular three on three because it's loser's ball. So it's quick transition. So that was easy to pick up. I think the toughest thing was definitely being in shape. Like I, like a regular three on three with no shot clock. I think you're able to play the whole game to 21. Usually a- anybody could play to 21. This game is this game is tough. Like you need subs. And there's a couple of times I try to push myself to the max and I just couldn't go anymore. How about some of these other teams from around the world? Like I feel like other other countries that you wouldn't expect are very good in 3 on 3. Like do you think that it's something that they prioritize in their development system? Like how are some other teams really good and who surprised you? Uh, well, 
uh, if you if you did your research, um, our pool was the toughest pool throughout the whole uh, qualifier, and we had two of the top top teams in the world in that in that um in that pool. So the the one was Lafia that we ended up playing. Uh, I think it was the second day, the first game, and they're really good. Um, I think they're number one. They're either one or two in the world. And then the next one was number six in the world. I think is Netherlands that we ended up beating uh, on the second uh, on the first day. Um, biggest surprise is that I think uh, a lot of these countries, what they're doing is, um, if they know they have no chance of making the Olympics five on five, what they're doing is grabbing grabbing their guys and going to three on three, uh, which is the smartest thing to do. If the USA or whoever is going to dominate the five on five scene. Well, shoot. Let's let's go to somewhere else where we could dominate. So yeah, I think that there's a lot of future for the sport, right? Obviously, it's becoming an Olympic sport, so there's going to be a lot of attention on it, and we need to figure out how we're developing that pathway for athletes. Where there's three on three championships, there's basketball development sessions where kids are learning mm -hmm. three on three specifically at a young age. Mm -hmm. um, you know, as well as like maybe even like a nationals where Team Ontario plays team quebec and team nova scotia and team alberta right with three on three like it's going to become a whole thing how like how do you see the future of three on three growing having you know seen what you've seen with the with the sport uh just just from the traction it's picking up and um you look at you know uh, a heavyweight like the usa who doesn't qualify for the men's so now it's probably the, uh the next olympics now they, they're going to probably be serious about it um as far as i think uh, i was talking with steve sir um i think mongolia is definitely on the right path on how they're doing it so they have um i think it's three teams so they have the um the like the adults uh, guys you know older then they have a u23 team and then they have a u19 team so what they do is when when the older guys are done playing they retire the u23 move up to the older group U19 move up and they just keep going running that train, which is pretty smart. Yeah. Do you think it's, do you think it's more important in three on three than in five on five to have that team chemistry of like having played with these guys for many, many years? Oh, most definitely. It's, it's definitely, um, you have to find like a good group of guys. Um, I was honored and blessed to have the group that we had. Um, all of us got along, all of us, um, kind of where there was no, animosity towards anyone we kind of held each other accountable and it was always um from a learning experience we were all willing to learn whereas um some of these teams you know it's it's tough because three on three is not so much like i want to be the man it's kind of like collectively so um i think finding a good group that is key yeah, we're, we're hopeful that with the government's announcements about returning to, to play and reopening that we'll be able to do some summer programming. And what seems most likely for us is an outdoor three on three event this summer. So mm -hmm. that's kind of our big focus at Ontario Basketball, building something like that, going to a couple cities, probably in August, the way things are opening um, and, and doing some events like that in a couple different age groups, even with some older age groups than we've typically done, like up to 21. Um, yeah, that'd be good. You know, anyone that anyone that's not familiar with the sport, like what would you tell them? Like, what are the main differences between three on three and five on five? Because, you know, I feel like basketball players or like people in that community, they grew up playing that like at the rec center or at recess or whatever. Right. Like when mm -hmm. they were younger. But like, you know, I talk to people from other sports um, and they've never heard of three on three. Mm -hmm. I, I think the major difference is. Um, just the, the transition from offense to defense. And then it, it becomes where the same plays that you run on five on five are not, they're not as good running for three on three. So there's, there's different types of quick hitters that you can steal, but you kind of don't want to, because it's a 12 second shot clock, you don't want to be spending uh, loads amount of time trying to run a uh, set all the way through just because it's so quick. It's a quick turnaround. Um, I think uh, the biggest thing, to be honest, is um, 
uh, I lost my train of thought. But um, I think the biggest thing for for just three on three for it to grow is just being able to to play play it this way, to introduce it, um, get people familiar with uh, the rules, um, and then just have uh, different tournaments. I think that would be that would be ideal to try and get everyone to try and conform to this new sense of three on three just because it's so different from uh three on three at hoop it up or something where it's no shot clock you check it up if you if you score like this one is totally different and then yeah, just, go ahead no you you grab the ball right out of the basket right yeah and it's it's like it's weird too because some of the rules uh in five on five that you would be like oh, I'm going to help. Well, you can't help three on three just because the two hurts you so bad. So it's like, if you come over to help, guys wide open, guys usually knock down that three. So it's like different different vari variants throughout the, the game that you have to kind of pay attention to. And then there's different things where you'd be like, oh, that's a terrible shot that guy shot. Some of these guys are practicing bad shots just, just so they can shoot them in this. Which what was the best? Shot. What was the best bad shot you saw? Um, I don't know if he did it this tournament, but he's he's done it um, on the world tour. Uh, his name is uh, Carlos Las Manas. He plays for Lafia. He practices uh, fadeaway threes. Like that's his whole thing. 